All right, hello, OAS family. It is time for another book review, and today we are going to be reviewing Landscape in Sichuan by Zhen Quegong. So, before we get into the details of this book, we're going to talk a little bit about the general statistics. The book is 12 inches tall by 8 and 5 eighths inches wide. It is a hardcover book, and... It has approximately 202 pages and has text in both Chinese and English. So this is a unique book, something that's worth, t worth noting that our publisher has stated that all of their hardcover art books are out of print, which means that they have a certain amount of stock on hand, but once those, that stock is sold out, there will be no more books available. So. If you like this book, I would grab a copy of it because after our publisher sells out of its last copy that it has in its warehouse, it will be very difficult to find. So we're gonna check out the book. It is a pretty unique book. I think it's fairly moderately priced for a hardcover coffee table style art book. It is beautifully bound. It has this very uh, handsome dust cover on it and has uh, a cover in sort of this kind of green imitation leather. And you, you'll you see that the contents of the book itself are really well laid out and the typesetting is good and the writing is good and also the artwork is really beautiful. So it is a landscape book that blends both uh, some instruction with also a nice library of final masterpieces and does focus on this particular Sichuan province area in China that has some of the most beautiful landscape sceneries in the whole country. So here we have a preface um, and a little editor's note, some background on the country and the area and a background on sort of Chinese painting in general. And we have a table of contents. We have here some biographical information here on the artist in Chinese. And then we get right into uh, the first of the featured pieces of artwork. So we have a couple uh, sceneries here. Um, this is uh, Qingchen, one of the four famous mountains on the left-hand side. Uh, it's like the three gorges are Qingqian, Xiamen, and Ame, and these are like the four great spectacles of the world. So here are some paintings based on that area, these quite famous landscapes in the Sichuan province. So we have this painting here on the left-hand side, and then this one here, and set against these sort of sketches. So this is done in this kind of nice artistic way, very neat kind of layout. And then continuing on, more sort of Three Gorges inspired pieces of artwork. Final compositions here with this sort of rolling mist, as you can see. If you've never been to China before, you would look at these paintings and think that this scenery is fantasized. You know, we're not really used to mountains that look like this here in the United States. We have mountains that are more sort of like rolling kind of hills but in china the mountains have this verticality and you know the, these sort of sharp very vertical rocky peaks that are very distinctive looking and if if i'd never seen them in person if i'd not seen them in person i would have thought wow you know these paintings can't be real they have to be sensationalized but but the the mountains really do look like this so here is a painting that's called Autumn in Wu Gorge, and it has the full composition on the left-hand side here, and on the right-hand side it has a zoom in so you can see some of the details of the stroke work. And then we start to get in some, into some of the instructional portions of the book. So these are different techniques for creating textures and rock work. So it talks about this, which is kind of wrinkling, 
which is like the first stage where they're showing the edges and outlining the rock work. And then this next part, which they call skimming, which is like the initial fill. And then we sort of start placing dots, which give you a sense of trees and foliage. And then finally, the coloration portion, which is more about like shading and mist. So these are four stages here, nice little four step instructional piece. Then we get into some details about painting smaller rocks and stones. Some nice subject matter here on, on that. And then more ideas of uh, rock painting this time, thinking more about using them in composition. Nice in, in something like this to place a boat here in, so, to get, so you get a sense of the scale of it. Um, really makes this look massive. And then more sketches related to rock painting here, different areas, different peaks in the Three Gorge area. And then we have two scenes from, from E Mei. We have uh, this uh, Heilongjiang uh, waterfall and uh, the mountain stream. This one we featured in our latest email that went out. And then here we have uh, another instructional piece which talks about different steps of mountain painting. So you can see here this larger stroke and then they start to define the shape a little bit more in this stage and then uh, pull pull the shape downward here and then fill it out compositionally in this final stage. So nice four, four step illustration here. And then showing how you would do uh, flat and distant mountains, two different rendering styles here. Or, you know, maybe even this is like two stages where this is called sort of stage one and this is stage two where they sort of fill in and do the shading and the mist. So more instructional pieces interwoven against these finished compositions. You see here are some beautiful sceneries with really a sense of scale and showing nice blank space at the top to give us a sense of like how high we are up looking downward on it and really nice mist effects here on the left hand side. So more Ame Mountains. This is the first time we see an actual photograph of the area to give you a sense of how the artist is capturing the feeling of a real place. And then again, this is a really magnificent scenery here. We have this rolling mist coming through these different uh, uh, peaks. And then we have this wonderful bridge with the traveler there to really give a sense of the scale. So this is cloud painting. So getting a sense of how you are going to depict clouds and mists in, in different styles. This one is more style, a style that has become associated with Japanese painting that has this sort of line work, uh, making sort of outlining the shapes with lines. And then this is doing it more with washes and empty space. Another picture of a scenery there set against paintings. So we have a kind of a long book, so I'm going to start picking up the pace here, but you can see it's just a huge amount of content, both instructional, we get into some rendering ideas for water. So this is 
areas of the three gorges that feature like rivers. And then we have a section on tree painting. So getting into dotting, different outline leaf paintings. This is a gorgeous waterfall and this rest stop that they call a ting. Really beautiful painting. A bunch of different um, lovely paintings here featuring trees. So here's a section on uh, structures like houses and bridges. So really nice showing depiction of these different structures. Really gives a, a sense of human beings relating in these large natural settings. So it's nice having these things in there because it does give a small evidence of, of human activity. And then also gives the idea of how small the human activity is set against how large the scenery is. So more uh, finished compositions that feature house and boats. There's a little pagoda here on a hill. Nice little dots representing these birds in flight. And then this lone sailboat there up at the top. Just a huge amount of instruction and finished compositions here. So much so that I need to pick up the pace because I don't want this video to be too long. Nice sense of autumn in these series of paintings here where you can see the artist is incorporating these fall colors to give a sense of season to the pieces. This is a really beautiful Three Gorge painting that has, again, these elements of structure, house structure, mountains, mist, and water. And that blow up on the right hand side. So this is nine stages uh, getting into this final finished composition here, but showing the stages with which the painting is developed. Nice little instructional piece. So these are the final two stages when they get into the coloration here. And then here is the finished one on this side. So another, again, Three Gorges Mountain composition. Shown in five stages here. And a couple more examples. Seven different paintings sort of featured on this Three Gorge area. So here is a technique session section that's basically on these techniques that they call wrinkling. So these are just different uh, techniques with which they, they use strokes to depict the texture of rocks. And then here are five finished compositions that feature this sort of wrinkling technique. And then a section where they talk about mountains in the distance. And then finished compositions showing this idea of mountains in the distance. And then now here's a section featuring on using dots to suggest trees. And then finished compositions featuring this technique, sort of showcasing these tree dot dots. And then 
sort of dots or el small elements uh, in scenery. So these are thinking about using these dotted techniques to depict other things other than trees. So here's boats here, another boat, this structure, pagoda. Lovely white space utilization here that just shows this, gives you the idea of this rolling mist. And same here. Again, these are more paintings featuring these, what, what he's calling dotted scenery. So just these little small elements of human structures that give the painting a sense of scale. So here is section focusing on mist and clouds. So you can see here planar techniques where you can see the technique showcasing, showcased mostly by ink. And then here is a larger version version of a finished composition, sort of showing how the technique is placed in final composition. More final compositions featuring these mist and cloud techniques. Now we're getting into a section on coloration. So these are this is the sort of the final stage of kind of shading that gives these paintings their depth of color. So you can see four different paintings that feature different palettes of color, some warmer, some cooler. So here are some dots here in vermilion that are clearly signaling a seasonal autumn. And then this is a more uh, muted or uh, mist or wash or shading that, that shows that same co color palette. All right, this is a waterfall painting techniques. So here is a six stage buildup where you can see how they use the line work to build out these complex waterfall shapes where they show the rocks and then they show these lines that suggest the water flowing in and around the rocks. Really neat. And here is a real photo. So you can see how the artist takes inspiration from the real photo. More waterfall painting techniques. And then final compositions. Here's one that's just in ink. So it's nice to see something just in ink where you can see a little bit clearer the brush technique without the distraction of the color. And then here's another abstract piece, and then one here with these more muted fall colors. Now we're getting into these huge, complex... This is an area called Jiuzaiko. If you ever have seen the Jet Li movie Hero, there's beautiful scenes of this area in that book. This area is just absolutely gorgeous. And you can see it captured in these paintings here, and particularly stunning waterfalls in this area. So here we have uh, pines and waterfalls, and then here we have autumn trees. A sense of spring here. Autumn here. And then two more waterfall depictions. Really beautiful. And then we get into a section on snow. So talking about techniques of how you use shading to set aside this white space to 
suggest snow. So we have sort of snow in the winter and snow in the spring. It's like slightly different feel here where you in the spring are getting a sense of the trees, but still with the remnants of the snow. So we have a couple actual pictures here um, and then some paintings of different areas of Sichuan with this idea of snow on the mountains. Now we have this section that's on sort of rapid currents where, where, where we're using techniques to show the movement of the water. So really effective here, you can see. And then they put this boat in the middle here to give the, you the sense of, you know, danger or precariousness. You can see these different styles for depicting the movement of water. This is a very signature element of Asian landscapes, which is, you know, these terraced fields where they, you see them growing rice or other crops, but it's like these miles and miles of, of terraced farming on, in, on or near mountains. So you can see these techniques we're showing these terraces here in four stages. And then here are different field sketches showing like different ideas of terracing. And then some final compositions. We're changing styles significantly now. The terracing uh, asks, I think, for more line work. So you can definitely see that these are featuring a little bit more detailed line work. And a couple finished paintings here featuring the terraces. So here's a section where we turn our attention to the trees. A little segment on painting pine needles. And then six different techniques for pine tree painting. Pine is a subject, symbolic, highly symbolic subject. Uh, so it, you know, it says here that it occupies an important position in Chinese painting. Um, it talks about idioms like evergreen pines and cypresses and evergreen life. They stand for longevity. And also the Chinese prefer pine tree paintings as a symbol for greetings. So more pine tree paintings here. This is pines with plum blossom. And then pine mixed with crane for this double symbol of evergreen longevity. And here are cypress trees. So a whole section on you know, these uh, Chinese fur paintings here. And then these banyan trees, so a different style of tree now. And then we have these final compositions here where we're featuring these trees with more significant trunks. These are more like we're imagining trees like in the west to look like and then smaller bushes smaller trees or shrubs and then some finished paintings featuring these sort of bushes or smaller trees And this is the last page here featuring this nice composition which has this very strong 
series of mountain peaks with a couple of these dotted scenery pieces, this human structure here, this pagoda, the sailboat, and then this idea of mist and mountains in the distance. So that is it. That is uh, Landscape in Sichuan. And uh, if you want to purchase this book, you can uh, purchase it on our website. As of the filming of this, I think we have about 11 copies currently in stock. And once again, if you like this book, I would not delay. There is a sense as we go forward, if books are relevant anymore. And I know my father it has a strong belief that books will always be relevant. So uh, as, as a family, we are staying committed to printing books. But because there are fewer books being printed, the, the book printing is getting very expensive. So it is a good opportunity now if you value books to purchase some of these books that are, especially these hardcover books that are going out of print. There are wonderful collector coffee table pieces. And also you can see the content on them is quite practical uh, for artistic study. So, so yeah, uh, if you like this video and want more content like this, go ahead and like and subscribe. And uh, as always, we wish you happy painting. Mm -hmm.